welcome back to my channel my name is Bree Danielle if you are new if you're a returning subscriber welcome back to my channel I know it's been a while I know you wasn't probably expecting me to post a video because it's been so long but I'm back long story short I was really really sick for a long time and I just being honest I didn't have no motivation to film didn't know what to film so I'm back on track <laughs> with my job with YouTube with other stuff that I got going on as well so yes but in today's video i'm going to be explaining to you a little bit about my job which if you don't know already i am a head start teacher a teacher to two-year-olds so i'm just going to be explaining some of the expectations of being a head start teacher certain things i wish i knew before starting this position and certain things i learned and maybe some pros and cons here and there but just this video is just for people who have questions about you know how it is being a head start teacher um what should i expect before being in this position because for me personal experience i started this position very last minute the reason why i became a teacher was because it was offered to me because somebody else quit their job and it just it was an unexpected blessing that came like that so i didn't have no time to prepare myself mentally prepare physically i didn't have no time to think about what to do i didn't have no time for nothing 24 hours before class started for the kiddos i found out i was being a teacher to them so i only had 24 hours to prepare so i didn't know nothing so there's a lot of things that i did learn about this job that i did wish i knew before but now i know so this is for the people who are you know wondering what it's like what to do should i be in this position position should i go for it yeah this is the video for you i've been a head start teacher to two-year-olds for six months prior to that i've been a assistant teacher to three and four-year-olds for about five months so i learned a lot during these months it's not that long i just started this position but I did learn a lot of, of things. So this is my first year teaching and I learned a lot. So I'm definitely gonna grow as you know, the school years go on, however long I decide to be a teacher. But just to let you know, I am a teacher now, but I am pursuing a different career in the future, which is very soon because I'm going back to school to be a speech pathologist to Head Start students. So I'm still in the Head Start, you know, little field, but I won't be necessarily a teacher. I'll just be providing services for students who need um, speech and stuff like that. But without further ado, let's just get started into the video. Okay, so when you hear the word Head Start teacher, you're probably wondering, or you're probably thinking like, okay, I'm just teaching two-year-olds or however old the children are. I'm just teaching them, doing lesson plans, you know, guiding them to be young independent boys and girls and stuff like that but there's a lot behind being a head start teacher than just teaching and that's one thing i did not know so of course i learned but yeah i'm just thinking like okay what do i teach these kids like i'm teaching them but what do i teach and stuff like that you know I was confused, I was. I only had 24 hours to prepare myself and although I was an assistant, I learned a little bit, but being an actual teacher on my own, it was just like, what's going on? <laughs> but I do have another teacher in the classroom with me, so of course, it's a little bit more easier. I'm just going into this position like, okay, I'm teaching them and that's it, but no, there's a lot of responsibilities that go into this job besides just teaching the kids so i know every job is different but my job specifically have certain things that you have to do outside of being a teacher well not outside of being a teacher but like outside of teaching the students for example i didn't know that you have to do home visits before the kids start their school year home visits are basically where a teacher and a staff member goes into the child's home ask questions you know get to see how the child is living it's for safety reasons um basically you know ask the parents what do your child likes how do they learn what do they feel more, more comfortable you know doing stuff like that um also making sure that the child have a bed um some food in the refrigerator a uh, fire alarm stuff like that another thing that i wish i knew was maintenance with the classroom with the school in general there's a lot of things that go into 
having a classroom, which I did not know, which I, I kind of did, but not like fully knew. So for example, maintenance in the classroom is a big, big thing where I work at um, most Head Start places as well, because these are, these are children. Um, they're very young, so certain things have to be placed in a certain spot, of course, for safety reasons. But one thing I didn't know was that the furniture in the classroom is so like, is very strict. It's a, it's a strict policy where only certain furniture can be placed certain places and stuff like that. That's one thing I didn't know. So making sure that your classroom is under the guidelines is a very important thing when you're a teacher um, to young students. So the reason why you have to be on top of maintenance is because you want to keep your license. Well, you want your school to keep their license. So there's a lot of strict rules that go into furniture, the walls, stuff like that. So anything has to be very, very, very specific when it comes down to being a teacher. And that's your responsibility as well. So another thing that I wish I knew before being a teacher was there's a lot of paperwork that go into this position like a lot a lot a lot <laughs> let me let me emphasize a lot of paperwork and paperwork such as like um for example of course their attendance um their health check papers and stuff like that like it's so much paperwork i cannot even describe it's a lot um, and that's something that you have to do daily because certain things have to be tracked, like their food, th the meal count, how many students ate the meal, like how, many, how much meals was given out to the students. Um, the, health, the health and daily check for the classroom, making sure that the classroom um, was cleaned, um, making sure the classroom has everything in a certain spot, that has to be written down as well. So like a lot of things, based off the classroom has to be written down. Every nick and cranny of it has to be on paper for documentation. So I didn't know that that was one of the things that I was walking into because of course I know there's paperwork, but I didn't know it was that much, you know, it's a lot. So any, any little thing has to be documented. And when I say any little thing, I mean any little thing. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you are going into this position. You're not just making lesson plans. You got to do a lot of paperwork as well. So that's one thing I wish I knew, but now I know. And I pretty much got the hang of it. So I'm good. It's, it's all good. Okay, so another thing um, that you probably already knew, but like there's a shortage in staff members in schools. There's a shortage in teachers. It's just a, sto a shortage in the education field in general. And that's pretty understandable because there is cons that go around, you know, being talked about, you know, like their pay, um, the benefits and, you know, the support system that you get being a teacher. And that's why a lot of people do not want to go into this position because they hear a lot of things like, oh, teachers are not getting treated right or not, they're not getting paid right. And that would kind of discourage you from being a teacher, of course, because you know you're going into a position where you want to at least grow from it and get paid from it you know so that's understandable but being a teacher in a system where there's no staff members barely and there's no support that can really discourage somebody so being that i am a teacher now i do see that there's a lack of support for teachers because of the lack of staff members and it's difficult because for example, me, I do lesson plans and it was pretty hard to do lesson plans when I didn't have time to prep. I didn't have time to do certain things for the classroom. It was just a lot of, uh, it was like an imbalance for time management. It was really, really hard. And that's because there's a lack of staff members. Okay. So yeah, it was really hard um, starting off this position because I didn't have time to do nothing because of the, the lack of staff members in the school. So me and my coworker was struggling, trying to get things done as far as the bulletin boards and lesson plans and stuff like that, the paperwork. It was a lot because we don't have the support system that we need. And although our boss is trying her best, but like she's one person and we need more support than just one person. Obviously we need like a sub or assistant and it was just two of us and it's hard, you know? Being that we work from the the exact time the kids start all the way until they end what time do you have to do anything when you're in the classroom when the kids start all the way until they end 
and then you go home and it's just like i didn't have time to do nothing but teach and you know be with the students and of course us teachers don't want to work on our lunch break we don't we don't have time to work at home you know some people got families some people got this and that responsibilities so it's just like it was hard but it was a lot of pressure because certain things had to be done but how can it be done if we don't have time to do it although that's one thing that might discourage you from being a teacher i say don't let it because it's so much um, cons with being a teacher but there's a lot more pros that pretty much you know kind of balance it out i guess it kind of balanced the pros and the cons it's like a balance but i guess it's a personal preference for you so yeah, um, the support system with being a teacher is something that I wish I knew, but of course I didn't know too much about it because I wasn't a teacher myself. But now that I am a teacher, I'm like, yeah, I see what other teachers are talking about. And although every grade or every age group is different, you pretty much see some similarities in different areas of the education field. So yeah. So one thing I wish I knew before starting this job was that I was going to get I was going to get sick like every two to three months. Now of course I work with babies, they're two, they're babies to me. But yeah, I, I knew I would get sick, but I didn't know it was gonna be like this, like this bad. And there's eight children in one classroom. So you got kids who sick, who wants to be up all up under you. They're you know, they want to feel loved and cuddled because they're sick and they don't feel good. So it's just like all those germs are going on you. And it doesn't matter how much you wash your hands, you end up getting sick anyways. Um, I wear my mask. <clears throat> I wear my mask every single day. Just a personal preference, but I do and I still end up getting sick. Not as much as I would probably get sick if I wasn't wearing my mask. But with me wearing my mask, I do get sick. But, um yeah that's one thing that i wish i knew and i of course i knew i would get, get sick but not like this a few more things before i end this video lesson plans i know a lot of people have questions about that i do get questions in my comments when it comes down to like my work videos about lesson plans and you know teaching stuff but yeah lesson plans um my job i don't know about everybody else's but they provide a monthly schedule for each month and it's a month it's like a monthly schedule where they have like different topics and categories like for example one month might be your five senses and then you might have to do a lesson plan based off of that the next month might be um exploring plants so your lesson plan will have to be exploring plants for that month so you basically make your own lesson plan based off the category or the subject of the month basically like that and you do your lesson plans from scratch the website that i use they actually provide certain suggestions for your lesson plans but i don't always use it i usually just make certain things up from the top of my head or i search it up and make my lesson plan like that so um lesson plans are not that hard once you get the hang of it but of course just starting out you're like what do i teach what do i do what do i say what's going on but working with kids, of course, you got a lot of things that you have to implement into your lesson plan, like sensory, um, reading, um, math, art, stuff like that. Not too big, but you know, like math, shapes, you know? Um, but yeah, as far as the lesson plan, you make it up yourself based off the subject of the month and you go from there. So it's not that hard. I'm getting the, the hang of it, but I'll say like, give it three months and you'll probably get like a little just of how it's supposed to be yeah so being a teacher for six months definitely taught me a lot i don't know everything but this is just a video to explain how i learned certain things with being into this field and if you have any more questions you can always comment down below and i will always answer like i'm always here to help people out especially if you don't know what to do if you're contemplating if you have questions or whatever the case may be but i learned a lot it's only been six months but i definitely learned a, a few tips and tricks on being a t-shirt to two-year-olds being in the head start program in general um so yeah even though it's been six months 
when I get to the next school year, things are going to definitely be a little bit more quicker for me because I already know what to do. But yes, you guys, um, I didn't want to make this like just tremendously like cons of being a teacher. There's so many pros to being a teacher, such as building a relationship with that child and having that child trust you when they're not with their parents, you know, building connections with the families, um, seeing that your children are growing from you, basically, like you're teaching them and they're actually progressing. And that makes you feel better because it's just like, okay, I taught you guys and I'm seeing the progress. I'm doing something good. So it makes you feel good as good as a person that this little human being that's not even yours is somebody else's child is growing because you're teaching them. Okay, so if you guys did get some answers from this video, if you learned a little something, something about being a Head Start teacher, if you, you know, definitely took something out of it, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you did. Um, comment down below any questions, concerns, or anything, anything. It doesn't matter if it's work related, personal, it doesn't matter. Comment down below and subscribe to my channel for more work videos and stuff like that i also do lifestyle videos outside of work but yes you guys i'll see you in the next video which will be on sunday and peace